How's it going everyone? Cody Bernardi here with another YouTube video and in today's video we are talking about weaponizing chat GPT. Um, I have yet to make a video on this tool uh, because I wanted to play around with it a little bit, get to know it a little bit more and uh, yeah this tool is pretty scary for security related purposes. Now I will over the next coming months or maybe weeks uh, try to find some use cases for OSINT uh, haven't really found it yet because it, it the tool itself does not analyze current information. It really is only great for making code and all that, at least in the use case that I have. So anyways, taking a look at on my screen right now, this is ChatGPT. Now the first thing that I have listed here as something that you can use it for is creating Google dorks. Now I've covered Google dorks a few times in the past um, and uh, We'll just do create a Google dork to search.gov web sites for PDF, CSV, and XLS files. Now, uh, you will get this quite a bit. Uh, it says the content may violate our content policy. But basically, it gave us this. So site gov, which is not correct because we want to put a star in there. So star.gov. Uh, and then it searches file type PDF or CSV or XLS. Um, so it, it gives out that sort of information. It's You could get really specific, like I want to gather all the PDF files, the Excel spreadsheets, from this list right here, you can have it make a Python script where it can create unique um, uh, searches for like an inputted list. So if I have a list of like 100 different websites I wanna enumerate on Google, you can have it create a Python script for you, which we'll get into scripting in a bit with ChatGPT, um, but it can do that for you. So Google dorks, kind of easy stuff, but it can do it for you. Next thing is provide commands and context into specific tools. Now, it is a natural language processing, GPT, big words I don't really understand, but it, it, it's something that I think it can do, and I've seen it do this with like Shodan and Gray Noise, is if you train it enough to understand some information about a product, it can actually tell you how to run certain things. So let's say that I'm, you know, uh, advanced persistent threat, and I really want to target like un uninterruptible power supplies. Well, what we could do is like we could go to APC UPS uh, user guide, and um, we'll just come here. So smart UPS, and we will look at like SSH if that is a possibility no ssh so we'll come back here and we'll do like ssh i don't know command line interface for ups whatever so how to use the command line interface boom 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 and uh this is it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna tr we are gonna try this out so we're gonna do user ups network management card 2 and we're gonna type that into here so we'll do apc and this is live. The APC network management card allows you to monitor and manage UPS via command line interface. So help displays a list of available commands, status, uh, current battery level events, um, and it's gonna keep going on. And these are certain, these are things you can run once you have access to that UPS uh, shutdown. Uh, control manner, reboot, control allows you to remotely control the UPS, including turning it on and off, uh, adjusting voltage and frequency. Firmware allows you to update the firmware of the UPS. It's important to note these commands are for general use. So like, let's take a look at this. So it's gonna, it's, it's gonna take the, the previous contacts or conversations you've had with it. It's like, what are the arguments you can make or I don't know how to run that. So like the firmware command is for the APC, blah, blah, blah. Uh, specific arguments in the command vary depending on the firmware, but some common ones, update. 
Um, and I'm also doing this while not having access to any sort of UPS. So I'm not having to test this in the real world. Like right here, it's telling me like the firmware update uh, is at firmware.bin. Activate status, like you get the point. So like it will assist you with specific products. So uh, you could go on Shodan and start looking for certain, uh, you know, PLCs or anything like that. And then get a user guide and kind of, you know, have a very beginner level conversation with ChatGPT and it will give you this sort of information. Now, obviously I could probably find all this info in the user interface, but the fact that I could just ask and it gives it to me is next level crazy. And this is just like one example. Um, so next up we will do analyze data logs. So ChatGPT will analyze information for you. Um, so we'll go to, um, let's go ahead and like, let's go to my pie hole. So we'll go to my pie hole real quick and I will have it just analyze its logs. I don't know. We'll see what we could do. So we'll do pie hole di diagnostics, uh, tail pie hole log. And let's see if we get anything here. Nothing here. Audit log. Nope. Okay. So we will just copy all of this over and we'll have it tell us stuff. Um, I could also like log into OBH somewhere and maybe try this out. So I'm just going to copy this. Like it's a bunch of information here and I'm just going to paste it and see what it tells me. So this is a log file for the initial, initial, oh my God, big word, initialization process for a software called PyHole, blah, blah, blah. So it says the log file that has been running for four days, 23 hours, 20 minutes. And then it goes to the, you know, blah, 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 blah. So it could tell you, you just input a large string of, string of text to chat GPT and it could tell you all about it. Uh, you could probably ask questions like, how do I delete logs? Like how do I uh, delete the above log? To delete the log file displayed above, you can use the following command in terminal. Well, that doesn't help. <laughs> What's the, maybe we can, maybe we can ask it a little bit more specifically because it's just telling you to run a remove file. So I'm going to ask it to, and Kat's trying to get in here, Leo. So we'll go up here. So generate debug log. So path to debug log pie hole and hit enter, stop generating. So we'll do that. Look at this, like it's telling you like, it's running a find and grep and xargs and all that. So boom, there you go. There's the pathway to that, that specific log right there. Okay, next up, this one I've actually had a ton of fun with is actually creating code um, and doing code reviews. So I've actually created a, uh, Pinger PS1 file a long time ago. Uh, this is it right here. This is meant to be a skid file, but all I'm going to do is I'm going to have it tell me what this particular process right here does. So I'm going to say, let's tell me what this does. So we are going to do this. What does this do? What does this do? And we're just going to paste it in there. And I know what it does. It turns the volume up on your audio driver. So uh, it says uh, PowerShell uses Net Framework to control the audio volume on the system. It uses the add type commandlet uh, to define a C-sharp code block that uses the system runtime enter something namespace to interact with the core audio API. And then it turns it up to 100%. Uh, the last line sets the audio volume to 0.1. I mean, there you go. Like if you want to know what that particular piece of code does, uh, we can do this. Like we'll copy this whole thing over. What does this do? And uh, does a few things. First out, let's put some text, which appears to be ASCII art of a skull. No, it's not what that is, but 
<laughs> so, like, and you can create this. Like, it not only analyzes this for you, but you can also have it create stuff for you. So, like, uh, create a PowerShell script to SCP the current working directory to in to a remote system uh, that might flag something conversation not found Ooh, i actually might have triggered it sometimes if you have issues uh it will just like cut itself off okay here we go so copy item commandlet to copy files in the current working directory to remote system via SCP. So username, password, remote server, path to remote server. So that's the credentials that you would have. That is the IP address that you own. That is the path on your system. And then I'm not going to try this out right now, but in theory, this PS1 file, after a couple uh, bits of sandboxing, if you get errors, which another th a phenomenal thing about ChatGPT is that actually will help you out with errors that you have. So I'm not gonna try this out in this video. That might be my first Patreon video is creating malware. Um, I don't know if you wanna call this malware or not, but um, stay tuned for that. So just created some code for me. Cool. Um, so let's say create a Python script to enumerate the sub domains of a you take user input so you can also ask it to take in like user input and it's probably going to use like requests yep um and here we go Re uh, import requests import regex enter in the domain name blah 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 find all doing some regex for something i don't know where it's pulling from uh for a sub subdomain in subdomains print plus subdomain except so I don't know if that's going to actually pull subdomains or not. Let's see. So that may or may not work. I'm not going to try that out. But if you have issues, take the error code that you get when you run it and then paste it back into here. So anyways, that is it for this video. If y'all enjoy content like this, please hit the thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button with the bell notification enabled so you get notified anytime I post a new video. I actually have a video rendering right now. You can see at the bottom of my screen, Sony Vegas is pumping away at a, like an hour long video. Um, so once that's out, I will edit this video and uh, I'll continue to create content for uh, chat GPT pertaining to OSINT. So if you have ideas or anything like that, please let me know down below. But with that, anyways, that is it for this video. Y'all take care, goodbye.